We've had a couple nice frosts here now in the fall. Uh, yesterday morning, in fact, it was down right around 30 Fahrenheit. So a lot of the frost tender, if not all of the frost tender plants, the squashes, the basils, the tomatoes and the like that have been out in our landscape are definitely uh, put to bed for the winter. They're done. We've got a lot of hardy perennials overall and a lot of very hardy annuals outside that still are green and nice. But I thought it'd be fun now that we've had enough frost to really zero out the tender creatures to take a look in this high tunnel at what plants remain. Now, of course, we haven't had brutally cold, you know, down in the teens or anything like that. It'd be a different story in here then. But this is where these high tunnels very much pay off is when you get to the edge or the swing season where the plants that are outside and exposed to just that below freezing or just a little bit further, they get nipped. And in here you can see the holy basil, uh, basically it's all frost tender plants are still going strong. There, a few of them are starting to show some cold stresses, for example. I would suspect what we're seeing on the leaves of these Tulsi, or these holy basil, with this little bit of brownness, that's a little too cold for them. They're going to start slowing down. We need to come in and do a harvest here sooner than later because we're going to get a night in the 20s sometime soon. Uh, it's not forecast just yet, but it's inevitable. Uh, but right now, when the sun comes out, the bumblebees love coming in here and enjoying these amazing medicinal flowers. It's kind of like a last hurrah before it almost feels like they come in and they're, uh, they're stupefied that there's still flowers like this in the landscape. And there's some marigolds that would otherwise be zapped by the cold. So this is where this sort of structure really helps is to extend these marginal plants at the end of the season. Of course, in the beginning of the season to boost the warmth. And we've talked about that in other videos and we'll share more notes. But we're still able to harvest husk cherries in here. This is sooner than later we need to finish up the harvest, pull these and get a nice thick layer of compost in here. Well, let's look at some other plants in this space. We've learned through some experiments that this Mioga ginger uh, does not actually need to be in this high tunnel at all in order to survive in our landscape. Out in the garden, they will overwinter, it seems, and come back no problem. But having this additional warmth and buffering from the cold, I think is really helpful for them in that these plants have not gotten knocked by the frost yet and their flowers are still maturing. And I wonder, will they be able to be pollinated and make actual viable seed? I'd be thrilled to harvest some real seeds. So we're not just growing Mioga ginger uh, clonally from the roots, but able to actually harvest some seed from them. I have no experience with that, we'll see. But a high tunnel like this uh, passively helps create the opportunity and kind of hold the option open. Look at these flowers, they're amazing. Out here in the garden, definitely um, being put to bed by that frost on the Mioga ginger. Maybe their flowers under here will still maturate a bit, but I think they're probably focusing on getting themselves back into the earth energetically and going to bed. It's kind of nice to have them in both contexts. Pretty good chance we won't be able to collect viable seed from the Malabar spinach or the Malokia. Both beautiful plants, really interesting edible plants <clears throat> that really would prefer a climate that is not a 1200 foot elevation north facing wet slope in central New York. <laughs> but their flowers on the Malabar spinach haven't even started really opening. So I wonder if we'll even see flowers, definitely won't get seed, but we can still eat the leaves and enjoy them. And the Malokia which Sasha loves cooking with. It's like a mucilaginous stinging nettle sort of flavor, really very pungent and flavorful. Flowers are starting to open. We almost certainly won't get seed, oh well, but uh, still time to be able to harvest these and dry these so we can enjoy them for the winter. A nice thing to have in a structure like this, $10 little digital device tells me the high and the low of both temperature and humidity. The top row shows you that the humidity has been quite high which is good, it's a greenhouse, it's a high tunnel, it wants that. And down below you can see uh, on the bottom left, 36 Fahrenheit was the low. So it did not go below freezing, but definitely cool enough for a little damage. And yesterday it got up to 75 
uh, at least where this stone is, where it was sunny, is probably a lot warmer. It felt very nice in here yesterday when the sun was out. So as the ambient landscape here in our cool zone 5B climate starts pretty dramatically winding down, it's nice to have spaces like this, especially, you know, $150 or so, uh, not too big a deal. And they've, this has lasted us a number of years so far and still seems like it'll keep going. Having these little tropical continuations in an otherwise cool, temperate uh, landscape is kind of special. It almost has a magical feel to be able to walk in here and smell holy basil and marigolds and be able to nibble on these different medicinal rare plants that are not from around here. Once everything gets zeroed out for the winter, we'll go back to being practical and using it for cold hardy starts sometime in February and March, and we'll document that. But these cattle panel high tunnels, really something spectacular for a cold landscape. Thanks for watching.